Sushma. <clears throat> so fine. So everyone able to hear me? Perfect. Yeah. So friends, welcome back. So yesterday we had an introduction and what about what is the software testing we have seen that and we have seen that what is software testing types of uh, softwares uh, we have okay now um, and uh, also we have seen that uh, software quality uh, how we get the software quality yes while testing it only we'll get the uh, defect free and meeting the requirements and expectations uh, delivering in time uh, within budget uh, maintainable all these are the metrics uh, to get the software uh, uh, quality okay right? to measure the quality of the software while testing uh, we will follow all these metrics during testing we will follow all these metrics in getting the quality um, product okay right? fine so friends uh, <clears throat> today i am giving you glance uh, what are the concepts uh, i will be covered in manual testing and core java and selenium a brief i am going to be uh, give the picture friends Okay, from tomorrow onwards, we'll start the actual session. Mm -hmm. Just me give the let me give the brief points. Okay, so friends, as I uh, as I break this into the multiple modules, so first let's talk about software testing concepts. Okay, let me increase the font. Software testing concepts. So what we are going to be discuss here. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, let me put the bullet points or uh, points. Okay. Okay. First we are talking about uh, what is software testing. Actually, already we have discussed, right? What is software testing and types of testings okay types of softwares so yes what is software testing we discuss and types of software also we have discussed and next is what is uh, um, difference between the project and product project and the product as we discussed project is a uh, uh, designed for one client only, but product is defined for the all the uh, uh, companies. Okay, so example uh, for that, uh, yes, take example for project, uh, uh, Axis Bank is there. Axis Bank is a project which is specific to that Axis Bank only, the project is defined, not for any other banks. Whereas product means, take example, Instagram is there, Facebook is there, WhatsApp is there. This is called as a product uh, which is used by all the persons all the clients yes or no that's the difference product and project yesterday we have discussed it okay and also we will discuss about the error difference between the error bug and uh, failure so error means what uh, if programmer writing any program if any programmer writing a program programmer errors programmer writing errors that's treat as a error bug means getting this bug up during the actual with expected so client is expecting something actual is getting something if any differentiation is uh, getting in that process we get as a bug or defect we can we can say like mm. defect bug or defect and coming as a failure failure will be occurring in a customer end suppose here when developer developing any errors they are doing that's called as an error during testing period, this error is coming during development phase, where bug or defect is getting in a testing phase, where failure is getting in a, in a customer, in the end customer phase, in the client end is getting like, suppose you did there some development, testing must happen, the deploy into the production server, end customers are using the product, there suddenly they got failed, it got failed, script got failed, application get failed, this failure is occurring in the in client end, customer end. This is what differentiation, error, bug or defect and failure. Okay, na? Mm -hmm. 
and next uh, we will talk about the next we will talk about the um what we can say yeah next we'll talk about sdlc we'll talk about sdlc <clears throat> one second let me keep ascending sdlc uh, in this sdlc we have so many models are there software development life cycle sdlc stands for software development life cycle one second In software development life cycle, it uh, specifies the process of the development. In software development life cycle, it uh, specifies the process of the development. What it includes? What the software development life cycle includes? Can anyone tell that? It includes requirements. If, if any product has come, you need to develop. First, it will be starting from the requirements and analysis. That's the first stage. Then after we will do the designing. Outline work we will doing as a designing. Then after we will be doing the developing. Development activity will be happening. Then after we will do the testing, testing for that developed one. Then after lastly, we will do the maintenance. All these phases will be included in the SDLCs. SDLC stands for Software Development Life Cycle. Okay, requirements gathering, designing, development, testing, maintenance, all these things will be done in the SDLC process during the developing stage. Okay, now, so here in SDLC, Software Development Life Cycle, we have so various models are there. In Software Development Life Cycles, there are various models are there, which are nothing but waterfall model. One second, waterfall model. Hmm. And next is a spiral model. These are various models to develop your software. In software development life cycle, these are the various models. Using these models, they are developing the project or a build, whatever it is, technology. Waterfall model, spiral model, V model. These are things that uh, we do that. Okay, na? these are the models we see. Okay, na? <clears throat> and next coming to the software testing life cycle, STLC we call it. STLC. Next is STLC. Next is STLC. STLC stands for software testing life cycle. Okay, na? So during your testing, you must follow some life cycles. Okay. Let me discuss what concepts will be covered here. Okay. STLC. We'll talk about test plan, test planning, test planning. Okay. Na? Test. Designing or development and uh, next what we do test execution and next bug reporting and tracking bug reporting and tracking and next is test uh, closure. Okay, this will do that. Test planning, test designing, test development, test execution, and uh, test uh, bug reporting and tracking and test closure. Okay, now. So friends, test STLC is a part of the SDLC only. This is purely development life cycle. This is a testing life cycle. Okay, now. This is a, um, in, in SDLC, what we do? We analyze, we design, we code it, we test it, we deploy it, uh, and we maintenance. We will also do the maintenance in the development life cycle. In that, in the development life cycle, we have a testing also is there. Yes or no? See, in SDLC, what we do? Analysis, right? We'll do analysis. Next, what we do? We do design, right? And next, what we do? 
we do coding we are building the code okay next what we do after coding done we do the testing and next what we do deployment which means after developing the code of testing the code we have to deploy it to the server then after what we do maintenance we do that in sdlc so in this uh, in this sdlc where we do the testing right this testing is sub part in testing what we follow stlc process testing life cycle is there where for testing we will plan it we will design or develop it we execute it we bug and report and tracking it and close up the testing then only we will deploy it to the servers then if any issues comes then we do the maintenance understanding maintenance Okay, STLC is a part of the SDLC only. Got it? Okay, next step. We will we'll talk about types of testing friends here. We have various types of testings are there. So, um, types of uh, testings we are having. So, here, let's keep there some bullet points. Yeah. Here we do the regression testing. Regression testing and retesting. And next, smoke testing and sanity testing we do here in the testing part. So we have a testing life cycle is there. In that, what types of testings you are doing? You will do the regression testing. You will do the retestings. You will do the smoke testings and sanity testings. Okay, smoke testing and sanity testing. And next what we do, exploratory testing also we do that. Exploratory testing we'll do that. Next what we do, ad hoc testing, ad hoc. Ad hoc testing, monkey testing. Monkey testing we do that. And next we do positive and negative testings. Positive and negative testing. Next end to end testing. End to end testing. We do that. End to end testing we'll do. Okay. And next. Uh, um, and next, what to do? Um, okay, end to end testings. This is what we do regression testing and retesting, smoke and sanity testing, exploratory testing, ad hoc testing, monkey testing, positive and negative testing, end to end testings. We'll do that. Okay, now. Okay. And next, uh, during testing, during testing, okay, uh, during testing, we may get the defects. Yes or no? We will get the defects. Yes or no? Yes. Defect concepts. Defect concepts we'll talk here. Okay. During testing, we get the defects, right? Bug or defects, what it is. Okay, fine. So, defects or bugs and contents is defect report contents is defect report if is defect report okay and next uh, defect classifications we will we'll talk here like uh, severity and priorities of the defects we'll discuss here. Defect uh, classifications like uh, severity and priority. <coughs> <coughs> we'll discuss here. Okay. And next, uh, defect bug life cycle. Friends, here we have a development life cycle is there. 
software development life cycle is there and software testing life cycle is there here okay na and like this we for defects also we have a defect life cycle will be there defect life cycle will be there defect or a bug life life cycle is there okay na and after this uh, defect life cycle see defect life cycle means we have any error comes uh, we have to raise a defect uh, first we have to uh, identify the uh, priority and severity of the defect uh, then we have to raise the defect and we have to escalate the defect uh, and respective teams are working on that uh, uh, fixing of the defect uh, and again it is coming back to the developer developer will do the um, uh, retesting and uh, regression testing all these things and again there will be uh go for the next uh, uh case to develop like this happens okay na and next uh, we we'll discuss about the um uh, next we will talk about um okay okay um, defect life is all right yeah so in planning only in types of testing is in instance is okay fine so we'll talk about um, one more heading we have we missing here one more heading is um, test plan use cases versus test scenarios versus test cases some all this uh, miscellaneous i'm talking i'm talking about here okay and test case template we we'll discuss about test case templates okay and uh, um, requirement traceable matrix we'll discuss requirement traceable matrix we'll discuss and uh, nv nv environment test any environment setups we'll do that and test executions test nv nv environment and setup and test executions okay <clears throat> these things we'll discuss okay test plan up oh, one second test plan use cases versus test scenarios versus test cases test case templates requirement traceable matrix requirement traceable matrix traceability b i l i t y traceability p r a c e b a b i l i t y t c e a traceability okay b q u R I R E M E N T. Okay. Yes, man. Okay. So, so defect concepts we we'll talk about defects and bugs. Con uh, contents in defect report. What are the content is there in the defect report? And defect classifications. We'll talk. What is the severity? What is the defect priority? All these things we'll discuss. And we'll talk about the defect or bug life cycle. We'll discuss. And test plan. We'll discuss. Use case versus test scenarios. and versus test cases we'll discuss about these differences and test case templates we'll discuss how the test case templates will be designed and requirement traceability matrix if any requirements comes we'll maintain some traceability matrix uh, form will be maintained and how we we'll be organizing all those things and test environment setups and test executions how the test environment is going to be set up uh, how this executions held in manual testing all those things uh, we'll discuss uh, in this part of this course friends and lastly we'll discuss about that uh, a uh, jira tool okay jira tool so these things we are going to be cover part of this uh, okay na <clears throat> manual testing friends okay na and next uh, and also we'll discuss about this how to build the test cases all this uh, test planning all those things came in test life cycle okay all these things we discussed here right designing development test executions in this process everything will be covered okay na yeah fine now next we are talking about the automation so friends the manual testing automation testing 
So if any product, any any development was happened, that testing needs to be happened. Testing needs to be happened. The testing can be happened manually or automation. We can do testing in manually or we can do in automation as well. Friends, we have manual testing, we have automation testing. Why we have to come to the automation testing? Can anyone tell me the points? We can do testing in manually as well. We can do testing in automation. Why we are preferring automation rather manual nowadays? Can anyone tell me that? Why automation testing? To reduce the time okay. complex. Sorry, madam. To Do? reduce the time complexity. Reduce the time complexity. Okay. Uh, any more? Any more? Only to reduce the time complexity? Hmm. Come on. And budget. <laughs> hmm. Budget. To reduce the budget. Uh, and to reduce the human error to reduce the human error yes to eliminate the human error right to reduce or eliminate reduce or eliminate human errors hmm. any any more Any more? Any more? <clears throat> yes, time to reduce the time complexity. Friends here, suppose say example today uh, we are developing for one project and we supposed to test them okay na nowadays every everything will be tested in a only one browser or multiple processor nowadays hmm? many browsers we are testing right so earlier days earlier days we have hardly one operating system only one browser as everyone knows that earlier we have only windows operating system and only we have a browser, only one single browser, which is IE, Internet Explorer. Yes or no? If any project comes, okay, if any project comes, they develop and they do testing manually in one operating system and in one browser. There are no that much uh, vendors. There are no Firefox. There are no Chrome. There are no Safaris earlier days. Yes or no? And also, there are no less maintenance is there. Less maintenance. Like suppose uh, once you build a pro project, uh, hardly like two years, three years or five years, they'll be changing the requirements. But nowadays is not like that. So we are testing, we are developing that, we are developing the scripts means, uh, we are, see, we are, we are uh, developing a project means uh, that project needs to be executed in many platforms and many projects nowadays. Yes. We have Linux is there, we have a uh, Mac is there, we have a Windows is there. So many platforms are there. Not only that, we also having many browser clients are there. Chrome is there, Firefox is there, IE is there, Safari is there. Yes or no? So once you develop the project, that project needs to be tested in all the platforms and all the browsers. Agree? Otherwise, if you not test in one browser and one platform, we get some compatible issues because the end customer will use uh, will use in Chrome some when end customers can open in a Firefox the same application some customers can open in Microsoft Edge. Yes or no? If one browser is working perfect, one browser is not working, your business is becoming loose. Yes or no? You are losing the business. Yes or no? You are losing the valid customers. Yes or no? Yeah. So. One test case is there means the test case needs to be tested in many platform OS and many browsers. So friends, if you do the testing, if you do the testing manually, nowadays everything is maintenance projects. See, I take example, Amazon, Flipkart, okay, uh, Red, 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 so, so many e-commerce sites are there. 
today what we are seeing the changes after one week or one month the changes will be affected yes or no keep on changing based on the requirements based on the customer customer taste the client is changing the requirements frequently changing the requirements whenever whenever requirements get changed we need to test it whenever requirements changes we need to test it and make it a defect free application that too testing should be happen in many platforms and many browsers every week is changing every two weeks is getting changed every month is getting changed very con uh, conflict or not yes or no okay we have less amount of time we have only less amount of time to test the same test case in many platforms and many browsers we don't have enough time to test it and also quality will be degraded quality will get degraded due to that because because we are human beings we does the errors same testing same test case we are executing many platforms and many browsers again and again and again and again we may lose our conscious and some of the quality defects we may lose up in that case when we deploy that into the production server definitely it caught as error it works in chrome it not working in the firefox because because of negligence because that's why we don't have enough time we will go with automation okay na so if one time we put the efforts converting that manual manual test case into automation scripts in one time effort the same script we are Ex uh, doing executions for many times parallelly we are executing parallelly at once in chrome firefox ie edge in every way parallelly we can execute same script what you develop that can be executed parallelly in one go in completing the executions we get a quick results also so to reduce that time complexity we go with automation and to reduce the budget friends manually if we go means uh, we require so many human resources we require physical resources we require a software resources we require a, we require a network teams network resources we have a, we must pay the salaries for the people so much so much budget we have to invest uh, to for testing in manually see one person is testing in windows with chrome another person is testing in windows with firefox another person is testing with windows with the safari like this like so many test cases they have to do that so so many resources human resources physical resources network resources and current and all these things has to be purchased all to be needs to be paid also also if you using software software licenses we have to purchase everything is budget budget oriented to reduce the budget so what we do we take a cloud systems is yes no one script we are making execute in cloud machines being in one system in front of and multiple systems in a cloud we are Uh, how much you how many systems you require that much you are paying and utilizing to execute that's it after execution is done we will be vacating the system as yes, a no? plug and play like this nowadays everything office are plug and play the same way we purchase systems according to our testings happens okay na there we can reduce the budget there okay na and uh, to eliminate and to reduce eliminate the human errors so friends as i say we are the human beings definitely we does the errors same task again and again we are doing means definitely we do the mistakes so to eliminate that so we are going with automation in that automation what we are doing one time we are investing time to automate the scripts according to instruct the scripts are getting drive executions so if any actual expected is not reaching not matching definitely it will gives the error and report it dynamically where in manual means we can't uh, effectively find the errors where to reduce uh, to reduce uh, and uh, to eliminate the human errors we go with automation for the purpose we go for automation friends we have so many automation tools are available in market like uft or qtp whatever we talk selenium robotics tosca like this so many automation tools are available in market why only selenium is a automation tool we are preferring means selenium is a user friendly and it is an open source and it is an free software selenium is automation tool which is a free and it is a open source and user friendly for the purpose we use a selenium as a automation tool where selenium automates the web applications web applications means the applications open through browsers are called as a web applications okay na <clears throat> tell me what is the difference between the free and open source 
I am saying Selenium is a free and open source. What is a free? What is an open source? Come on. What is the difference between the free and open source? Selenium is a free and it is an open source. What is the difference between the free and open source? Can anyone tell me? Do you know it? Hello? Hello? Uh, friends, can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, please. Uh, what's the difference between the free and open source? With your own words, you can say that. Whether right or wrong. No, no. We, don't. we oh. don't know. You can continue. Okay, fine. Free means no need to purchase license. Some softwares are licensed softwares. Some are licensed softwares. Okay. Some are the free. Free means nothing to purchase to work with Selenium. Another is the open source. Open source means source code. Source code of the Selenium is available. Source code of the Selenium is available. So we can change according to your wish. You can take the source code, you can download the source code. If you want to do any modifications, that's why it is a user friendly. Okay, it's a free and open source means if you want, if you have any requirements, you have your own uh, requirements, you have some own requirements, you can change the source code after downloading the Selenium open source code. That much flexibility is there. Where if you talk about UFT or Selenium, it's not a free software. It's a paid one. We have to purchase license. Seat license, concrete license will be there for UFT that we have to purchase it. And QDP or UFT is not an open source because it's a license. It means some team will be there. They will take care of any changes. If any libraries, advanced libraries is required, the team, the QTP or UFT team will be organizing all such things. Where in Selenium, it's open source like you and me. If we have a uh, good knowledge in Java, yes, we can download the source code and we can add extra functionalities to this in our local dump. That's the open source meaning. Okay, now? Fine. So, Selenium. Yes, to work with Selenium automation tool, what is required? What is the prerequisite to work with Selenium? Means uh, we need some programming language. Need a, some programming language. We need some programming language. So what type of programming languages my Selenium supports? Yes, Selenium supports various language bindings like Java, C Sharp, Ruby, Python, Scala, R language, Dart, Go programming, Haskell, JavaScript, PHP, etc. etc. These many languages my Selenium will support. Any one of the language binding using we can automate your web driver scripts using Selenium tool. Web driver means what? The web driver scripts. So, so Selenium automates browsers only, I said, web applications. The official website for Selenium is, we can see here, selenium.dev is a official website for Selenium. See, Selenium automates browsers. That's it. It only automates browsers like Chrome browsers, Firefox browsers, application open any browsers that can be automated. What you do with that power is entirely up to you. What is that power? How much technically your sounds good that makes you drive to automate your scripts. Okay, now any one of the language banding is required. Any one of the language banding that to core hoops concepts is necessary to work with Selenium. Okay, in core Java. First, we, we are designing this program as a core Java with Selenium. So here in core Java, we will discuss first of all. In core Java, what we discuss all the OOPS concepts. OOPS means object oriented programming features. Okay. What concepts to be covered in core Java means uh, in core Java, we'll talk about project creations, 
package creations with naming conventions, Java classes, interfaces, abstract classes, inheritance, variable types, data types and its default values, type castings, regular expressions, axis, non-axis modifiers, data hiding, encapsulation, um, exception handlings, collections, method overloading, method overriding, polymorphism, constructors, single dimensional array, two dimensional array, user defined arrays, decision making statements, loopings, file systems, regular expressions. These are the code Java OOPS concepts to be covered as part of the Selenium course. Any developers or any testers, these are the basic needs necessary to develop your application or to automate your scripts. Yes, making you understand the each and every concept very clearly. And after that, I will give some practical programs. As I said yesterday, if I talk about strings, string manipulation programs are there. If I talk about collections, for collections, we have some respect to collection programs are there. Likewise, I'll give the exercises. So I'm having some links are there where I can provide you. So if I talk about string sir, in string sir, we have some regularly we use in our program. Hello. But your voice is not in, sir.
So, so, so. Friends, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. So suddenly my uh, mic got trouble in the laptop. I connected to mobile. Okay. Fine. So, uh, yeah. So here uh, we will understand the concepts and uh, we will technically sounds good because as the Selim says, uh, okay, what did Selim is saying? One second. Selim automates browsers. That's it. What you do with that power is entirely up to you. The power is nothing but not a boost in Maltova. It is nothing but programming language. So you must be technically sounds good. You must be theoretically sounds good. Then if any issues comes, you must be able to troubleshoot the programs also. With the support of the debugging, it's possible. I'll make you expert in how to debug the scripts in troubleshooting, how to troubleshoot the issues. Suppose if I give any assignment practices for you, you don't know this program. So I have give, I shown you this program. You don't know how to execute. You can take a support of debugging step by step, step by step, it is executing. Each step, what was happening, you will know the information in a console window. That's why we can help the debug. The debug will be help you. If any issues comes in the middle of the line, you can debug line by line. Then you can trace out exactly the issue. Make a friendship with the debugging rather with your friends. It makes supports you to drive the executions smoothly. Okay. So these are the concepts to be covered in a core Java. Then after we will move to the Selenium tool. Okay, here in Selenium, we have various components are there. In Selenium tool, we have various components are there. Selenium ID, Selenium web driver, Selenium grid. These are the components. And one more component also is available, which is Selenium RC. RC stands for remote controller that got deprecated. Only these three components are were available, ID, web driver, and grid. These are the three components were available. The first component is Selenium ID, which is record and playback tool. To work with Selenium ID, we not require any of the languages whichever I said earlier. Just it's an record and playback. Start recording and execute the test case manually, whatever you having. And lastly, you stop that uh, stop that recording. So during the starting and stopping, whatever uh, executions you made manually, that is going to be recorded in a HTML format in a backend. Uh, and you can play back as many times you want. That's what it's saying, record and playback, record and playback. Okay, now? So while using IDE, we have some disadvantages out there. So recording in one browser may or may not work in some other browsers in worst case. In some cases, recorded in Chrome browser, one test case may or may not work in some other browsers in some, in some cases. And one more thing, some of the advanced elements cannot be get recorded using IDE. These are some uh, uh, disadvantages using the IDE. Where exactly this IDE is used means uh, this ID is used for the exploratory testing or pilot projects. Uh, we are using this ID because where you're starting any new project, the client is asking how you are going to be conduct your testing. So uh, to go to show the instant results uh, in front of the client we, in, 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 in way of uh, pilot projects, we will prefer ID in, in front of client. We'll do recording and we play back. Okay. We'll show that. Okay. Na? Fine. So, uh, next component to overcome these problems, the next component got released, uh, which is Selenium Web Driver. If you want to work with Selenium Web Driver, you must be aware of any one of the languages, whichever I said. Okay, now Java or Shisha, whatever it is. By using any of the language binding, we used to write the Web Driver scripts in Selenium. Okay, what it does, if you want to create a robust browser based regression automation suits and test then you prefer web driver friends where in ide recorded in one browser may not may or may not work in some other browsers considering all these problems in web driver we are developing the codes uh, that's what if you want to create a robust browser based regression automation suits and test you prefer web driver so what the script you are building that is a robust browser based the script what you're developing that's a robust browser based regression automation suits and tests were developed and that can be executed in a 
any platform, any any browsers. Who will take care of executions after building this robust browser-based recognition source? Means uh, the grid will take care. Using the CLM grid, uh, using the CLM grid, uh, yes, we can execute parallel. Of course, in web driver also we can execute parallel in local system. Okay, now getting what I'm saying that the what the robust browser-based recognition automation suits were developed, uh, these also can be done parallelly. Okay, where means in your local system. But using grid, uh, we can execute them remotely. Nowadays, we are talking about cloud right? cloud, VMware missions, cloud missions. Okay, that can be done with grid only. If you want to scale up by distributing and running tests on several missions uh, and manage multiple environments from a central point, uh, making it easy to run tests against a vast combination of browsers and OS, then we want to use the CLM grid. Uh, Okay, now, so to build browser-based recognition automation suits and tests, we use a web driver. And if you want to scale and distribute to execute scripts parallel in many systems, we use a grid. If anybody asks you what is the appropriate combination of Selenium is, you could say web driver with the grid. With web driver, robust scripts will be creating browser-based. And with the grid, yes, we scale and distribute to execute your developer scripts parallelly in many systems and many browsers. Getting? Selenium, appropriate combination is web driver with a grid. This is what we use, these components. Okay. In a, what happened? Double is not working. Yeah, fine. Okay. In Selenium web driver, what concepts to be covered? What concepts will be covered in Selenium web driver? Yeah, let me show you in a glance. First, uh, we will talk about um, how to um, launch the various browsers, like client browsers, Firefox browsers, Chrome browsers, IE browsers, Edge browsers through Selenium web driver. How can we launch? How can we launch these browsers dynamically? Also, we will discuss here. Then after, we will be talking about a uh, Chrome options and a profiles concept. Friends, when you are executing any test case manually, any uh, any notification bars, any proxy settings, any certificate errors comes, your presence will be there, then you can handle those them. Then you can handle those. But when you are running your scripts through automation, when these events occur, sir, who is responsibility? To handle the certificate errors, notification bars, all these things means uh, automation engineer only. How we can handle? Yes, we will do first of all taking the browser into our control. Then after we will handle the notification bars, certificate errors, proxy settings, etc. etc. Okay, then how we will take the browsers into our control? Well, automation. Yes, using the profiles. Using the browser profile concept, we will take the browser into our charge, into our control. Then how you say accordingly, my browser will get acted. Okay, now? So we will create a, our browser user-defined profiles we will be creating. On our browser user-defined profiles, we will do the necessary settings by using the options classes. For every browser, we have a Chrome option class, Firefox option class, Edge option classes like this. So with these options classes, we can disable the information bus. We can maximize the window. We can disable the notifications and page load strategies we can do on browsers. And managing the certificate errors we can do, proxy settings we can do all in a browsers with the support of the options class and profiles combination only. Getting? And next coming to the synchronization. Friends, uh, our scripts are very fast in executions. Everything we are instructing through script only. If you execute a script, what happens? It's going to be executed very fast, 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 fast. An application loading elements is take more time. So script is very fast. Application elements loading is in a very slow. So where there is some synchronization issues will occur, as yes, to sync between these two, we use some synchronization methods. Yes, implicit weight, explicit weight, web driver weight, thread dot sleep, like these some synchronization methods are there. While using them between the application and script, uh, we will make a uh, sync. 
we will make our script to wait until the element get loaded you know, using such mechanisms to sync between the script and application and next coming to the locators friends now if we want to perform some action on the uh, element means uh, some application we have so many elements are there text boxes radio buttons check boxes links uh, buttons drop downs web tables web calendars links images like this, so many elements will be there in our application. Okay, now, how does the automation, how does the automation know, sir, this element to interact, uh, to perform action? Manually means you have a sense that you can, you can feel it, you can sense it, you can feel it, you can, okay, while seeing the test case scenario, we will execute manually. Yes, but in automation, who is responsible to uh, sense that elements to perform action means uh, automation engineer only is responsible to sense that element uh, to perform an action on it. How we can sense that elements means uh, using some locators. Friends, we are the human beings. We have so many properties with us. Starting baby coming from mother womb, the baby is a very colorish height color, complexity. These are the first, first words come as a properties when any baby comes from other womb. Then after nine days, we keep a namakarana, like first name, last name, surname, nickname. All these are properties only. And starting from childhood, we apply for other card number who is sitting in India. Those people who are staying in US will have a SSL number. Yes or no? And uh, if you're working as, if you suppose you are coming as 18 years, then you're eligible for driving license. Yes? And also you're eligible for the order card. Yes? If you're working as an employee, you'll have an employee ID. Then after you'll, may, you'll tax filing, you'll have a PAN card number. Yes? These are all the properties of the human beings. Okay? If I want to, if I want to give some task to any person, what is the identity property I use to recognize him or her? I want to give some assignment to one person. What is the identity property I use to recognize him? To give some assignment? Come on, friends. What was the property I use to interact any person? Come on, friends. If I want to find any person, what is the property I use to interact him? Asking his name. Name, right? Name is one property. That's a unique property, right? Suppose mm -hmm. you, you are uh, contesting in elections. What is the identity there? You want to vote it. What is the identity there to recognize you? If elections are happening, you want to vote there. What is the identity proof there? You have to show? Voter ID number. Voter ID. If you're working as an employee, so to calculate your salaries, what is the identity there to calculate your salaries? Company ID. Employee ID, right? See, see, yeah. uh, identity is there. Based on need, that identity we are using. Unique ID only we are using. Why are not using other card number for calculating salaries? That's not irrelevant, right? Relevant things only, unique properties only, we are using, making use to recognize the element or object. Okay, now? So, like how human beings have some set of properties, based on need, how we are using that respect to properties to interact the person or object, similar way, in our applications, in our web applications, we can find number of web elements. We can see number of web elements we can find here. One second. See, suppose we have Amazon.in website is there. Amazon.in website is there. We can see so many elements are there. This is a drop down is there. This is a text box is there. This is a button is there. This is a link. This is the images. Like this, so many elements are there. Friends, even while seeing any person, can I recognize the other card number? No, right? Can I recognize this uh, uh, driving license? No, right? Can I recognize this uh, water card number? Huh? First name, surname, last name. No, right? We can't. If we want to get the details of that person, what will you do generally? What will you do? If you want to know the person details, anything, any information you want, what will you do generally? 
come on friends if you want to know the details of the person what will you do aadhar id we can make no 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 in front of you one person is there madam you want mm-hmm. to know his details a father card number voter card number name you want how you will communicate the person to get the details first of all tell me opposite to your person having some details all the properties what i said having you want to know his properties what will you do what will you do ask for now sorry So asking, you yes, yeah. you are spying. You are asking me something, but you are spying the details, right? What is your name? What is your other card number? Like this, you are spying the person in getting the details. A similar way, even while seeing these elements, can you see the properties of these elements? This is a drop down. We don't see any properties. This is a text box. We don't see any properties. Okay, this is a drop down. This is a button. We we don't see any properties. we want to know the properties of this like how we have a properties defined by uh, by the bias similar way in application every element have some set of properties defined by the developers with that properties only we are interacting the web elements to perform the actions on it how can i get the properties of this each and every element just uh, which element properties you want you just click on that element right click on that element and click on inspect see here if i do this uh, i can see the properties type is one property id is one property value is one property name is one property like this have so many properties are defined by the developers by using any one of the property we will interact these elements in performing the actions on it getting or not like how we have a properties for us similar way every web element suppose i want property of this drop downs so just click on arrow mark and show on this see these are the properties of this drop down if you want properties of the link uh, just click on the inspector arrow mark it turns to the blue color and show on which link you want see these are the properties of the link uh. got it defined by the developers so we will talk about locators so majorly people will be stucking over here wasting their time how can how to find the uh, right locators in building the scripts uh, here we will talk about 6 to 7 uh, hours we are occupied here uh, for locators only okay we have totally eight locators are there of course we have so many locators we having but in that we are using only unique locators only to identify the person like similar way even uh, every elements uh, have so many properties defined by the developers uh, only unique properties only will be used like this id name class name xpath css link text parcel link text and tag name these are the eight locators using we will be interacting the web elements to perform the actions okay na and also we'll talk about how to write your customized dynamic xpaths and customize the dynamic css selectors how to write also we'll discuss and also we'll see some exercises on each locator sir xpath css our live examples will be showing you so 6 to 7 hours we are occupied with locators basic understanding of locators 3 hours and xpath and css selectors for 2 hours and remaining 2 hours is for uh, doing some exercises on the locators to make you hands free and coming to the marvin project so any any project you are building using some build tools only we are building your projects so ant is there marvin is there gradle is there so marvin is one of the uh, aggressive build tool which uh, every companies are using nowadays so we are using marvin build we are be developing all the projects we will execute the projects uh, we will uh, um, run the scripts uh, through marvin only okay na we build the programs here and we execute the programs here and here we will add the plugins all those things here only okay na so and uh, coming to the test ng framework where test ng so friends selenium itself don't have any built in frameworks selenium will not have any built in frameworks test ng is one framework which is developed by the java language this is not a selenium framework if you want i can prove you see friends the official website for selenium is selenium.dev okay na here 
I'm clicking on a downloads link. Observe here, downloads link I'm clicking here. So then I am clicking on the uh, other languages exist. I am clicking here. Hmm. Read this page. There is an ecosystem full of open source projects around Selenium and WebDriver. And some of them are featured on this page. Here are number of drivers, which means drivers means, as I said, web drivers. So drivers means like, uh, suppose see, um we are opening chrome browser chrome drivers are required if you are running the scripts in firefox browser firefox drivers are required so that's drivers bindings means language bindings i just said selenium will be developed using any of the language binding like java c sharp ruby python these are the bindings are called language bindings plugins and frameworks which are created and maintained by the third parties which are created and maintained by the third parties. These are not maintained by the Selenium. By third parties only, everything is getting developed and maintained. Understanding? So even these frameworks are also developed by the third parties. So TestNG is not a Selenium built-in framework. It's a Java-defined framework. Like JNet is there, TestNG is there. These two are the Java-defined framework. Selenium itself don't have any built-in frameworks. Yeah. So in, in TestNG framework, we will be working on annotations. We have various annotations are there. What is the annotation? What are the types of annotations? What is the priorities of annotations? How to execute your test cases through TestNG suite? How can we set the TestNG executions as the priorities? How can we skip the executions? How can we group the test cases as particular named groups? How can we set the test dependencies? One test among other tests, we can set a dependencies using TestNG framework. Okay, how to run your test cases in a batch mode? How can we parameterize the test cases is using data providers? How to get the data from Excel to the data provided to the test cases? How to run your test cases parallelly, like uh, uh, irrespective to the classes, methods, suits, and tests? And how to uh, report it the fail, pass, skip test cases? Okay, now. Uh, all these things uh, we will discuss here. How to uh, work with uh, um, test engine listeners, uh, retrying that uh, test cases if any get fails. All these things we'll discuss as part of the test engine framework. Coming to the page object model. There itself meaning says uh, we will be working as a pages. As you know, any uh, web application if we talk means uh, Collections of pages, collection of pages we call as a one website or application. Okay, now so every page has some uh, elements and some operations. So each page elements and operations maintaining in a separate Java classes, organizing the things in separate page as a separate Java classes. Suppose ten pages are there, ten Java classes. How effectively you are organizing the scripts in page level is a page object model. And next coming to the automating links. So majority of the elements in your application will be the links only. How do we work with the links at different approaches? We are discussing here. How to interact with the static links. How to work with the dynamic links. How to interact a group of links in a header. How to uh, interact a uh, group of links in the entire page. Broken links, hidden links. All these types of links we'll be discussing as part of the automating links. And coming to the automating drop downs. So, friends, in drop downs, we used to select options, either single option or multi options, we may select in a drop down. And selecting options from drop down by send keys, we can select, a, or by using the select class, we can select all the approaches we'll be discussing in a automating drop downs. And coming to the pop-ups, there are various types of pop-ups will appear during your executions. Windows pop-ups will come, HTML pop-ups will come, and JavaScript pop-ups will come. When various types of pop-ups come, how can we handle through automation? We're discussing here as the tabs and pop-ups automation. And whereas coming to this class here, our friends can hear me? Yeah. Hello? 
yes yes suddenly call god uh, yeah uh, fine so actions classes some of the elements cannot be interacted directly by the selenium web driver then we will take a support of the actions class for advanced elements like a uh, mouse hovering elements some of the elements once i mouse over on particular element only it performs the actions that kind of elements are called mouse hovering elements this cannot be interacted directly by the web driver in some cases then we'll take a uh, support of the actions classes right clicking if you want right click on element double clicking on element chain actions dragging and dropping the elements automating the slide bars you know sliders will be there moving up and down horizontally or vertically the sliding moving the sliders these kind of advanced elements uh, cannot be performed directly by the web driver then we will take a support of the actions class okay now coming to the javascript executors with the web driver whatever we do interact with elements everything will does by the javascript executors the syntax will be very we'll discuss on it and next coming to the automating windows components friends as a starting line said selenium is purely automates the web applications only see here selenium automates browsers that's it it never automates desktop application window desktop applications my selenium will never allows to automate as yesterday also we discussed right in software ty types of softwares we can see that application softwares web applications mobile applications desktop applications so selenium can automates web applications and mobile applications uh, but desktop applications my selenium will not automate only browsers okay now fine so when when you are automating your web application elements suddenly some window elements got occurred what my selenium will do means the selenium will do hands up it can't automate because it's a window elements selenium cannot recognize the window elements how can we handle those situations yes there are so many free window automation tools are available like auto it sukoli robotics by using that free window automation tools we will install and download and install the auto it software and we will be writing the auto it programs to interact the windows components this auto it code finally we will be saving as a dot au3 is the extension that uh, auto it code we are associating in our selenium web driver script wherever windows related things comes this auto it script will get invoked uh, and handle that windows elements as all these things we'll discuss in the auto it and coming to the web tables and web calendars some of the elements will be in a inside of web tables you know web tables contains rows and columns yes or no rows and columns so in in a specific row and specific cells some element can be exist that can be text box that can be link that can be check box that can be drop down that can be link anything element can be placed in the web table cell so i want to find the web table row in that row in which cell my element is resides i want to perform action on it so how to work on web tables in web tables we will be having the static web tables we will be having the dynamic web tables which means static means the fixed rows and columns will be there in that some elements will be there so though we can interact the static tables dynamic tables means a uh, rows will be increased up based on the entries okay na plus called dynamic sometimes it four rows sometimes it be six rows sometimes it be 15 rows dynamically it is changing the rows so how can we work with dynamic tables and date pickers so calendars will be there some of the dates we have to select up supposed to say that uh, go uh, red uh, red bus red bus dot in is there red bull starting mm. red bus dot in see here here i want here i'm clicking on the date here so here we can see observe we want to select a date to book a bus ticket so based on the month and year uh, decided i will be selecting a date okay now based on the month and year selection only i will be selecting a data how to select the data 
that's called date picker and uh, and web table pagination will be there web table pagination web table pagination means uh, let me show you one second mm. web table pagination See an example to show you web table pagination. See, this is the web table, friends. Web table pages means in down we can see some pages are there. See, in first page, how many rows we contains the rows? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 rows we having. So if I click on second page, another 10 rows are coming. If a third page, another 10 rows are coming. Like this is called web table pagenations. So how to work with web table pagenations, all these things. Okay, now static tables, dynamic tables, date pickers and date calendars, and web table pagenations, all these things we'll discuss as part of the web table concepts. Friends, okay, we are doing the automation. We are developing the scenarios as the automation scripts. That scripts are required as test data or not? That scripts are required test data or not? Where do we organize this test data? We will organize this test data in a log4j, properties files, XML files, and Microsoft Excel. These are the various data sources where we will organize our test data into these various sources that will attach to the script and give the data to the scripts to execute. Hello? Yeah. Friends, can you see my screen? Friends, can you see my screen or not? No, sir. No, sir. Can you see my screen? Yeah, suddenly what happened? Admin, can you please uh, make me presenter? Screen got disabled for me. One second, let me call to the management. Uh, suddenly, skin got disabled. Uh, even to share the skin, also, I'm not having any permission. Host to disabled participant screen sharing. What is that? One second. Uh, where is that? Where is that? Where is that? Uh, Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay.
हेलो 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 यस यस यू आर ऑडिबल या या सॉरी सडनली सम सेटिंग्स फॉर डिसेबल्ड या सो हियर फ्रेंड्स नाउ सो वी नीड सो मेनी वेरियस डेटा सोर्सेस वी हैविंग फ्रॉम दिस वेरियस डेटा सोर्सेस वी कैन गेट दैट डेटा एंड वी गिव इट टू द स्क्रिप्ट लाइक लॉग फोर जे प्रॉपर्टीज फाइल्स XML files and Microsoft Excel. These are the various data sources where we can store our test data for our test cases necessary, and we'll give this data to the input for the our developed scripts. So all these things we'll discuss for uh, eight to ten hours. We'll be working on this all these various data sources end to end. Okay, and the next coming to the grid Microsoft. This is the grid. So as we discussed in Selenium. we have a two components appropriate components uh, which is selenium web driver and grid with web driver we are developing all the scripts uh, and developed scripts needs to execute parallelly in many operating system and in many browsers parallelly with the support of the grid only to work with the grid uh, yes uh, we will be creating some hub and nodes hub is nothing but kind of server nodes are nothing but kind of clients one hub will be there multiple clients will be there all hubs and nodes are all are nothing but systems only hub and nodes okay na here here we will be using some classes uh, uh, to connect to the remote systems uh, to execute our web driver scripts remotely parallel like this so we use a classes called remote web driver as i said uh, using with grid uh, we will executing your developed web driver script parallelly in server end so if you want to run in remotely we use a remote web driver what class we are using and where to and how to execute remotely means uh, with providing some desired capabilities in desired capabilities uh, we will be informing in which operating system in which browser needs to execute uh, in desired capabilities i will be informing and remote system means uh, in which remote uh, remotely where you need to execute i will be informing the remote ip address all those things in this so this is for 2 hours we'll be working on a, a selenium grid so this is what we are going to be uh, discuss here uh, for selenium web driver with a grid and next we will be talking about the frameworks uh, like one is a test ng framework uh, and next is a page object uh, model framework uh, and is a bdd cucumber framework friends especially these frameworks uh, Each framework will be discussed for ten hours. Test ng for ten hours we will discuss. Page object model for ten hours we will be discussing. Build cucumber framework also we will be discussing for the ten hours. And next we will be talking about that uh, um, uh, DevOps. In DevOps we will be talking about a uh, Maven build tool. We will talk about distributed server as a GitHub servers. And next uh, we will talk about a uh, CDCI pipeline as a Jenkins, Jenkins, and uh, Docker. Okay, Docker. So on Marvin build tool, every project will be built in a using build tool Marvin, and and this work should be accountable. It should be collaborated across the team members uh, with the support of the GitHub server only. how to create a account how to uh, uh, create a repository how to pull and how to push how to revert back how to clone the projects how to uh, work with the branches how to create a branches if how to match the branches if any conflicts are there in the branches how to resolve that the conflicts in the branches all such things we'll discuss in a github server and coming to the jenkins uh, Yes, uh, which is scheduled similar uh, developer scripts uh, or developer project scripts. If you want to execute uh, uh, parallelly, um, automatically means uh, we will schedule through Jenkins only. How you want to execute? Hourly, weekly, monthly, or soon after code is committed to the GitHub server? Uh, how the manner you want to schedule your executions? Uh, every scheduler will be happen through Jenkins only. Okay, now. and that to after completion of executions uh, we can trigger the mail set to the respect to team members uh, completion of the executions with the reports everything should be happen through jenkins automatically which automates your process devops okay na and dockers to execute uh, in a containers parallelly we use the dockers 
ओके ना एंड लास्टली विल डू सम मिनी प्रोजेक्ट मिनी प्रोजेक्ट टू मेक अंडरस्टैंड सो फाइनली uh to tell you that uh, final conclusion for this entire nation, entire uh, demo uh, benefits of the training okay na benefits of the training we give like a first we'll give the uh, soft copy metal sorry soft copy metal for manual testing and uh, for java and uh, selenium documents will be given okay and will give the recorded videos for one year view access uh, view access will be given uh, through the drive and you will be getting the source code daily source code whatever i was building okay either the java or selenium or project or whatever it is frameworks we are discussing every source code day to day i will commit and push it into the github server that github link will be shared to each and every person you can pull from your end for your references source code will be shared through github server github server so doubts are always encouraged in asking the sessions friends because uh, don't uh, feel free if you have any questions uh, ask me in the middle or in the end of the session so i will be uh, clarifying your doubts if you have any doubts questions all those things and my classes will helps you to get into job like 6 to 8 years person how much knowledge he is gaining that much knowledge you will be getting after completion of my classes no need to take any proxies so you can crack the interview as you want because i will give the uh, concepts such a way in a briefly explanation and uh, every notes and every uh, practical sessions is a uh, project oriented only i am giving the sessions so definitely you can crack the interview and the timing will be daily morning 8 to uh, 9:30 am daily one and a half hour is the session will goes on like this three months is the duration first we'll talk about manual testing then after we will talk about the uh, core java then after we will move to the selenium then after we'll go to the all the frameworks such things will move friends okay na that's all about that uh, session of this uh, second day demo friends so i hope everyone has understood this concept so tomorrow onwards uh, we'll start the selenium uh, sorry not the uh, first day of the manual test uh, manual testing uh, we will be starting uh, tomorrow is the first uh, first test session uh, two days demo was over from tomorrow onwards i will start the manual classes actual sessions okay thank you okay friends uh, done for today if you don't have any queries we are good to stop for today we'll meet tomorrow same timing with the same link thank you very much have a nice day bye bye